spread out our funds as much as possible so that we have a, a presence throughout the North. Groups like Kostya, which is listed on the bottom, is basically the overall umbrella group for, for uh, ex-prisoners. What Kostya basically does is often fights injustice for all Republican prisoners. Because if you were picked up in 1981 because your brother was a suspected IRA gunman and you were put in jail, you would have a record. 30 years later, you want to get a job, you want to get a house, if you want to adopt a child, that might hurt you. So Kostya oftentimes fights legally a lot of the injustice that still happen for those that were involved in the struggle for Irish freedom. The other groups, groups like Tarnell in West Belfast, Karja in Stravan, and Keatna in South Armagh are the people who fought and have gone back into their communities to help build up their communities. Straban in Tyrone was the most economically depressed region of any, country, of any country in Europe during the 60s, 70s, and 80s. No surprise that it's about 95% Catholic and strong, strong Republican. But these guys and girls here in Straban, a few years ago, we gave them $2,000. And it got them thinking, wow, if we can get some funds from the Ibernians, maybe there's other places. So they've widened their outreach and have gone to the European Union and now have been able to put together a great community center and this land that you see up here. It was basically wasteland and what they've converted it into is GAA fields um, and community, a community garden. They gave us the honor of planting the first tree in honor of the hunger strikers earlier this year. Two thousand dollars and they consider us the cornerstone of why they're able to do what they are. We went to, to Straban and you thought we were like visiting visiting royalty. We also worry about the prisoners that are stuck here in this country. There's a smaller group of probably around 30, 30 men that if they were in the North during the Good Friday Agreement, their records would have been uh, released and they would have been released from prisons. The men that were over here for various reasons are stuck in that gray area. Now as they're getting older and their families are being lost in the North of Ireland, they can't travel over. Well, I shouldn't say that they can travel over, but they might not to get, get back in. There's a gentleman by the name of Matt Morrison. Matt's about 55, 56 years old, based in St. Louis. Matt is an emergency pediatric nurse. He's been doing that for 20 years. Matt has saved the lives of American children. Matt has had to spend hours with people who've lost their children. Matt trains the St. Louis the Police Department on how to deal with prisoners who might have mental issues. Our country says Matt Morrison really shouldn't be here. It's time to stop that. Malachi McAllister is up there, you see. His case is probably one of the most prominent, a good friend of mine. His daughter, Nicola, is going to school to be a nurse. Her mom died seven years ago from cancer, was diagnosed in April and passed away in late July. She wants to dedicate her life to become a, an oncologist nurse in her mom's uh, memory. Because her status, she doesn't have any status. They can't get loans. Now we all know college education is what they cost, and many people do the same, but every year Maliki has to make sure he has enough money out of his pocket to pay for that tuition and not have the ability to at least get a loan for relief. That's wrong. We need to fix that, and we're working with both the McAllister Group and Harsalia to end these uh, discrimination. The Irish language schools, the picture behind me is probably one of the greatest visits I've had in the north of Ireland in the many times I've gone. It's called School of Fusica. It's in West Belfast and actually Twinbrook, the home of Bobby Sands. Uh, two or three years ago, after Dave Burke passed away, we had raffles, and all the money we raised, we gave to this school. Dave was very instrumental in over 20 years ago when this school first started. The raffle raised over $5,000 and again, we went in with the check, and we were like conquering heroes. The children put on a Christmas carol in Irish language. They sang songs for us, and it was one of the most moving and gratifying experiences we have ever, ever had. I think it's important to note that this school uh, existed in FEMA-type trailers.